Today I'd like to talk a little bit about a game I'm working on, tentatively called Cargo Defense. Until recently I was calling it Intruder Alert, but unfortunately that name is already taken. One thing I'd like to point out up front, so far all the art in this prototype is my own placeholder art. That means it's probably going to change before the finished game. The basic idea is, you take contracts for delivering cargo, and along the way, pirates or other intruders breach your ship and try to steal it. From there you engage in tactical combat to fight off the intruders and protect your cargo. Between missions you can customize the interior of your ship, giving this some elements of tower defense. You can change the layout of walls and doors, or add items like healing stations or teleporters. Successful missions increase your reputation, giving you access to more difficult contracts and more advanced equipment. You can also hire additional crew. They level up with experience and can gain various perks, but they can also gain stress leading to negative statuses. I'll save the details of these systems for another video. For now I'm focusing on combat mechanics because that's the most crucial part to a game like this. Although I designed this to be turn-based from the beginning, I had second thoughts and put it to a vote with an online poll. Out of 36 votes, the results were surprisingly close. 17 for turn-based, 16 for real-time, and 3 indifferent. So I stuck with the original plan. I took a lot of inspiration from the XCOM games, especially Enemy Unknown, but I didn't want this to be a copy. Like XCOM, each character has a limited number of actions per turn, and you don't know where the enemies are unless you have a line of sight to them. To achieve this in Godot, I attached a light 2D node to each member of the player's crew and set the mode to mask. This makes everything not lit invisible. I didn't want to limit the vision range, so I set the light texture to solid white and stretched the light to be very large. However, I didn't want this to affect the UI or hide static items like walls and doors, so I set the item cull mask for both the light and shadow to the second layer. Now only objects in the second layer would be hidden when the crew can't see them, and I would also have to assign light occluders to this layer for anything that blocks vision. One way I wanted to differ from XCOM is by simulating projectiles instead of offering a percentage chance and making the outcome seem like a die roll. This led to some other differences. A weapon with some spread to its projectiles might hit multiple enemies, even if it's not an explosive. For this reason I decided to use manual aiming rather than selecting a specific target. I might even introduce weapons with projectiles that bounce off walls, so you can hit enemies without a direct line of sight. One of my goals in cargo defense is to make each weapon feel unique. Not just a slight change in stats, but meaningfully different. Simulating projectiles with different behaviors will give me a lot of interesting ways to do this. This also has implications for taking cover. I plan to add half-height objects that characters can take cover behind, but rather than this affecting a percentage chance, I can simulate a third dimension to the projectile's movement to see whether or not it hits the cover before it hits the character behind it. Another difference I've decided on is not to include an overwatch that lets you attack out of turn, but instead to include a dodge action that lets a character attempt to evade the next projectile moving toward him or her. I'm still deciding whether or not characters will take damage from friendly fire, but if so, a dodge may even be triggered during the same turn. I've thought a lot about how to keep combat varied and interesting with perks and equipment, but at this point I really need to test and refine the core mechanics before I move forward. That means it's time to start working on AI. I've never made a proper AI before, so please don't consider this a guide to best practices. But here's my general approach. I started by thinking about what the enemy is trying to accomplish, and in this case it made sense to break that down into three phases. Finding your cargo, retrieving your cargo, and leaving. During any of these phases it may be necessary to prioritize fighting over those goals. This is one of several areas where I want enemy ships to vary in their personality. Some might allow their entire crew to stop and fight, while others might keep some of their crew on task, even if it risks their life. At the beginning of each turn, the enemy crew are sorted by how many of your crew they can see. The ones with the most targets, up to a set quota, are assigned to fight this turn. The rest are assigned to the task for the current phase. From there, I needed to break down those high-level tasks into something more specific. For example, if a character is assigned to fight, I want to reserve their last action for something defensive, dodging or taking cover, and for the rest of their actions, they should either attack or move if they don't have a good line of sight. Then these actions need to be broken down even further. If they decide to attack, they need to pick a target, or perhaps even multiple targets if they have a weapon with a lot of spread. In general though, it helps to start with high-level goals and break those down into more and more specific decisions and actions until you finally have something concrete enough to be easy to implement. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, I don't have my AI working yet to show you, but hopefully I'll have more to show next week. I'm planning on doing these videos roughly once a week, but I'm new to this, so I'd appreciate your feedback on what you'd like to see, 
or what I should do differently. Meanwhile, I hope this has been helpful, or at least interesting, and thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of my game development journey, please consider subscribing.